Welcome back to the channel everybody and today this episode we're going to feature how to do a um, basic uh, ignition modification for your Mopar if you want to get rid of that old factory made in China ignition control module box. Um, just get right into it and I'll show you. This is my 82 Dodge D150 and you just need some basic stuff. You'll need a GM four prong ignition control module, ICM from the 80s. It doesn't matter, car, truck, van, whatever. And you will need, uh, it doesn't have to be this exact one. Uh, you will need brass, copper, or aluminum plate of some sort um, for a heat sink. And you will need actual heat sink paste, the gray heat sink paste, and you'll have to uh, spread it out all over this uh, aluminum plate underneath the uh, ignition control module. You can buy it at Best Buy in the little syringe, or you can go online and buy several syringes online for like, I don't know, 5, 10, 15, 20 bucks for four or five of them. Anyway, um, I decided to use diamond plating because it looks, it's a truck, it looks tough, you know, custom. Anyway, you have to, what I had to do is uh, sit this down, measure out around it, trace it with the black fine tip sharpie, and then come in here and ground off the areas where the diamonds are, make it completely flat and drill my holes. And I went ahead and uh, drilled, or uh, used grade 8 studs and welded them to bare metal on um, kind of went overboard on this uh, heat sink but I don't care the main thing with this modification you do have to make sure you have good ground sources going to the module and the relay and all that good stuff so anyway um, I've got a heavy gauge ground wire here Make sure you solder your connections so they don't corrode and cause shorts or ground issues to cause this thing to not work or to short out. Um, like, so do like, you don't have to be use this big of a plate, but once this is bolted up, it's got about 7 16 gap behind here to allow airflow on the back side because once you start operating, you know, Turn the key fired up since it starts the circuit board inside there starts warming up this is a heat disper a dispersing plate and you will need the heat to be absorbed away from the bottom of this module and a little bit bigger plate than normal helps with that and i've actually felt down in here when this thing's running and you can actually feel the heat disperse out through this entire plate it goes from warm light warm to barely warm um, you can use the smaller ones that are the factory ones that come off the junk vehicles from the 80s. Or if they're not mounted to the bottom of the distributor, they'll be mounted off to the side. There'll be a, a separate bracket that comes off from the fender well or whatever, the firewall. And then you'll have this little aluminum plate with fins coming off of it for these modules. And some of them, um, there's these little plastic what I call nipples that come off, uh, one right here and one right here that come off, off of the uh, ones you buy at the store, the auto parts store. Like, I don't know if you can see it in this one. Try to focus. There's one, there used to be one right there and one right there, and I cut them off flush. Um, those will interfere with the moduling flat on the plate. And anyway, I use 100% uh, silicone grease to grease up the back side of these studs and around the uh, bolt hole the bolt holes and on the front where the nuts will go down on it and then like i said there's the ground uh wire and then on these things this little um tube here and this tube here are grounds so you got to make sure those are grounded too i put a little bit of grease in there and then there's another separate little ground on coming off of one of these prongs which i believe it's this little skinny one right there anyway um, so there's that and then uh, you can use your Mopar factory stock distributor and then you run 
aftermarket you have to uh, twist the wires together tape them up and then connect put the connector together I used the other factory connector on this side I snipped the from the original ran a, a black and uh, was it black and orange or whatever depending on your your vehicle your Mopar uh, you have to uh, twist them together, tape them up, and run them away from all the spark plugs. Something about the spark plugs. This, um, messes with the module or anyway, so I ran it all the way over here. Yeah, this is a mess. I got to get this cleaned up. This was from a former owner that I just haven't got to fix yet. Um, and then you, uh, I found the trigger wire. And you only get like seven point something or eight point something volts off here, so you have to run this over and uh, to a four, a four or five prong relay. There's wiring diagrams online for this. There's a real basic wiring diagram. As you can see, there's the orange trigger wire going here, and you got your red power source here, a ground wire, and then you got your uh, start. Uh, starter solenoid wire and um, these trucks on the factory starter relay have all prongs instead of just the older ones like the prongs plus the uh, what looks like the threaded stud sticking out of it so I was able to just go to a 40 amp modern day relay and it works great you don't have to worry about uh, the China ones from our, from the auto parts stores malfunctioning on you and are not making a contact these are 10 times better i make sure i get a good quality relay and this is another part of the system that you have to do because you, you bypass the uh ballast resistor you don't need that anymore and let and um uh it, this has to have a 12 volt source coming directly from the battery which explains the 15 amp fuse here and all this is tied in like this goes to the pot this like i said i know it's a mess in here it's like spaghetti um here's the wire that goes to the coil the positive side of the coil and then you got this wire that's tied into i guess the uh, voltage regulator I haven't checked it out in years, but it does run clear back over over to that side, and I think I had to splice it into the uh, the main wire, the main wire coming off of the uh, voltage regulator. And then, like I said, there's a di the basic diagrams online, and then um, um, like I said, this one here goes to the battery, and then you got uh, this one here on the back side is a black. It goes right here to the ground. You got to make sure this ground is really good. I put dielectric grease on here, or you can use silicone grease. Um, and despite what people may think, when it says on the box, um, non-conductive for the dielectric grease, it'll it's just like Vaseline. It'll still allow... The ground or the power source to go through it just keeps it from rusting and corroding um, that's another thing an old uh, old timer clean up your battery connections and put uh, Vaseline inside and out and on the uh, connections and everything and you'll never have to worry about corrosion see this this been on this truck for weeks and uh, I went ahead and just made sure that um, because I was having an issue with the ignition, it would randomly start up and I thought I had a, a ground issue source over here at the battery. So I rechecked all that, it was fine. But, and then I thought I had another one and I forgot years ago when I first did this mod, um, I forgot to solder these, this connection here on this connector. Uh, make sure you solder all your connections for your crimp connectors. Um... Guaranteed not to uh, corrode or rust, especially if you get rainwater running down between here and splattering on everything. Which I'm going to make a uh, bracket that comes up 
and over and down for these to mount to so they're away from here and then I might even put a piece of sheet metal in here make a, a like an awning just to keep rainwater from getting down on these uh, relays just to be on the safe side but anyway um, you have to use a 300 and some ohm coil it could be the canister coil from another make of vehicle if it could be a Volkswagen or Ford or whatever it may be but it has to be between 300 and 400 ohms it can't be 400 or more um, I think this one comes in at like 320 330 ohms and it's just the MSD blaster little miniature coil and it works great and like I said for the purist like I said, you could use that uh, other canister coil that looks factory with the 300 and some ohms. And um, the um, run that solid wire through the ballast resistor so it looks stock. And then on the uh, factory uh, Chrysler module, um, you could flip it over, take a propane torch, heat up the back where that, that sealant is, the epoxy. And when you start hearing it crackling, shut the torch off and then take a uh, straight edge screwdriver and start popping the chunks off off that and then once you get down to the circuit board you ditch the circuit board to where you're just left with the heat sink plate that's inside already and then you got the contacts um, for your factory four prong four or five prong wiring harness that uh, uh, boot that plugs down on the outside well on those contacts you just take one of these with the heat sink paste Drill your holes, mount it there, and then figure out which wires go to which contacts on the inside of the factory ignition box and solder them with good quality wire. And you bolt it back up. Everything looks factory if you want to be a purist like that. Um, but, um, and then of course you got, um, like I said, we found out this one was bad. It started acting up. And the first time it was a ground issue. Next time this just uh, just wouldn't the vehicle just wouldn't run no matter what. And then another way you can tell these are bad because sometimes they will run good on the vehicle till they warm up. And I hope I didn't repeat myself already. But anyway, heat comes out of the bottom here. Well, you can take these to the parts store, run three to four tests on these they don't let the kids fool you at the counter they can test these let them heat up if it's still if it's still passed it means you got a good module if it's if they run it once and it stays cold it could say it passes but once it heats up the circuit in there could uh, sh short out from the heat and then once it cools off it'll start it'll fire the vehicle back up again um, so let them run three to five tests Make sure they're all good, and if it's good, keep it. I happen to have, I bought a brand new one, and sometimes the, any of the new electronics stuff you buy, it doesn't matter if it's one of these or Chrysler or whatever, sometimes you can get a bad one or one that works for a while and then quits within a week or a couple days or something. So um, we definitely know this one's bad, and this one's been on the vehicle for a long, long time. So that, that shows you how long. I. You can go back through my videos and see how old the video is. And I mean, it, it's been quite a few years since I did this mod. But I happened to find this one on an old junk car. I tested that out this morning. The truck fired right up. I didn't leave it on there very long. And then I got another one. And I can't remember where this one came from. I can't remember if it, I think I got it off the old Buick over there. So this one's fairly new. And then um, I got a brand new one yesterday from O'Reilly's. Um, this one's going on the truck because it definitely has a warranty and the paperwork and stuff So but in order to do that I got to go to town and I'm out of the heat sink paste and um, So that's where I'm at but uh, it, like I said, it's real basic Wiring it seems like a lot the diagram online is real basic Um People have been doing them, and then you know the other the other thing is is where to mount the uh, heat sink plate. Well, you can mount it on the back of the firewall, but make sure you leave a gap. And then I run some aftermarket uh, sticky back 
foam uh, foam insulation weather stripping from um, a home improvement store to when so when the hood closes water doesn't run down all over the firewall um, because I've I've had issues before with the, the uh, voltage regulator being mounted up to the wall and then water running down in here and getting on the back and somehow water the, this these units are not sealed like they're supposed to even though they have the epoxy sealed on the back side somehow water got inside the unit and fried the unit so I went ahead and because these has got factory uh, mounting holes inside threads so what I did is I ran a grade grade 8 bolt a long one with an, and tighten the nut down so it still had the stud sticking out and then I went ahead and slid this on there and put another nut on there so it's it's it got probably 7 16 so a half inch gap away from the firewall and then I put the weather stripping up here just to make sure water doesn't run down on there because what I found out I took one of those flipped it over and heated up that epoxy stuff on the back until it started crackling and I started picking all that stuff out and you know what the inside of them things are filled with a fine white silica sand and somehow water got in there from rain filled up slowly the sand slowly slo soaked up moisture and water water basically and there was wires running through that sand and short circuited it to the body and fried the voltage regulator so anyway that's another little mod and, and, and I used the uh, grease on those to make sure nothing rust up it's got a good ground and, and I did that up and once in a while check your actual boot itself because of uh, heat and cold and age the connections the little thin brass tube that, that are the tubes that are got the crimped ends on it in there they can get weak and slowly loosen up from vibration and heat and they will cause a disconnect in the charging system so you might have to crimp them down a little bit and then push it back on there so that's another little safety or little tech tip that I've come across dealing with some of this stuff over the years but anyway like I said I got to get all this spaghetti mess cleaned up and all that shortened i don't know why the factory put so much loose wire in here this is ridiculous and uh but anyway um but yeah that's uh i don't think i forgot anything so uh hope you enjoyed this video feel free to comment if you got questions let me know i'll help you out i could um i think i got an email address if not i can um in my description in or in my uh my actual profile a youtube youtuber profile uh, i can help you on the side i'm also on facebook um just let me know and i'll i'll work with you uh, we got to keep these uh this vintage steel out on the road any of them doesn't matter if it's mopar but anyway and i oh and one other thing you, once you've done all the, this mod and it runs great and it's dependable and if you follow the basic steps um, you can actually gap your plugs to 40, 45 or even 50 uh, thousands of an inch instead of 35 um, and it runs so much better you, uh, it's a big difference but anyway until next time, time I'm rambling on oh and I wanted to show you my shirt hopefully you guys can see that Thought you might get a kick out of it. I like Chuck Norris, but I also like the Chuck Norris memes and the the uh, novelty shirts with Chuck Norris sayings and whatnot on them. But anyway, since I have studied mixed martial arts for over several years, including uh, Wing Chun Kung Fu that Bruce Lee first taught, uh, was studying under Ip Man. But yeah, that's. But anyway, until next time.